everybody, and welcome back to Tech Zulu Live from South by Southwest Interactive. I'm your host, Amanda Kulong, and I am now joined by Eric Gunderson of Mapbox. How are you? Hey, very good. <laughs> so uh, I, I hear that Mapbox powers some pretty well-known things like Foursquare and um, Evernote and things like that, USA Today or something, Yep. NPR. Um, what specifically are you doing for each of them? Yep. So we make it really easy to have a totally custom, beautiful, fast map. Okay. So you know, folks like Foursquare, they need to map where the where the bars are and yep. where people are going for dinner. Uh, Hitmonk, where the hotels are. Sure. Uh, Evernote, like you said, notes. Mm -hmm. So you, you need that base map. You yeah. need that for context of where this stuff is. Mm -hmm. So we make it really easy for developers to have a map inside their app or inside their website. And what are you using to power that? Like, um, so two things. One. Okay. So to make a map, you need two things. Okay. You, you need data. Right. And so I think that's the main point of your question. It's like, where do you get all these street data from? Exactly. Where, uh, <laughs> so uh, as, as you know from this last year, like the, the data of the map is it's hard. Uh, we're, we're using OpenStreetMap. It's like the Wikipedia okay. of, of maps. So anybody in the world can go in and mm -hmm. actually edit the map. So crazy. Start like, tracing roads, putting road names in. Yeah. So this gives us a huge advantage because mm. the world's really big and a lot of the companies... Is it working, really? The world well, no, is so, really no, big? So, right, so this is a really expensive Newsflash, problem. Newsflash, the world <laughs> is really big. So, so like, how, how are you, you going to map it all? Like, how, how many cars can you actually drive? Like, how do you actually make exactly. this? Um, like, and things are changing a lot. Yeah. So working with a big community like OpenStreetMap, uh, you have over a million different community members going mm -hmm. in there mapping where they live, where they work, sure. you know, where they're going on vacation. And that day by day is improving the map. Mm -hmm. Well, I can even think of examples like my tiny little town back in Maine, for some reason they decided for 911 purposes or something to change the names of all the streets that had been that way for years and years and years and years <laughs> and years and years. And years. So no. I, I haven't actually gone in and edited Open Maps, so I probably should because School Street is now River Street and all these silly things. They've changed oh. my tiny little town. Yeah, no, I, we see changes not that drastic normally. That's kind of a crazy <laughs> story. But, you know, like oh, cities all the time are quickly, quickly growing. Yeah. Uh, so putting in those additional streets anywhere. And, you know, you look at a player like Foursquare. Sure. Yeah, they got a huge base in the U.S., but then look at Brazil, look at Indonesia. That's where mm -hmm. their next two biggest markets are. Um, ha us having the ability to have good data there is important. And if we don't have good data, what's cool mm -hmm. about OpenStreetMap, again, you can go in and you can add the data. Huh. And so the Foursquare community has been so active in adding all these sure. places. Now they go in and add a lot of map data. And that, that's hmm. really cool. How did the company start for you? Uh, we, we were doing a lot of data work okay. um, in the international development space hmm. with, and working with different NGOs. So when, when you're going in doing like election work in Afghanistan or doing like food security yeah. work on the ground, it's like, and doing data, that data is geo. So we had to get good at making maps. And the tools mm -hmm. at the time just sucked. Like trying, yeah. to make a, trying to make a map on the web that's really fast, yeah. that's hard to do. And trying to tell a story with data, that's mm. really hard to do, right? There's no such thing as neutral data visualization, right? Exactly. Like, like, like design matters. So we started building tools and we started open sourcing them. So Mapbox originally was just a name for our GitHub account. <laughs> I love and, it. Um, <laughs> it, it. It clearly grew a little from there. You know, I always have to ask anyone who does anything open source, why open source for you uh, personally? So we, for us, it's a, it's a lot of different reasons. One, okay. it makes better product. Mm -hmm. You know, so the whole mapping space, this is, this is kind of complicated, right? You got to take the data, design it, render it, serve it up in the cloud, and then actually publish it, mm -hmm. whether that's like on, on mobile or on a site. That's okay. a big stack. Oh, yeah. So just like, just like Google, we had, to, we had to build that whole stack. But we, we built it with a team of 30 people because we were strategically using open source nice. along the way. So working with existing communities not only yeah. gives us um, like a better starting platform, mm -hmm. it allows us to start contributing back to those communities. Right. And the whole, the whole software gets better. Also, I mean, culturally, internally, when you develop software in the open like that, it, it just makes better product. Oh, yeah. And just the innovation that happens and the iterations that happen. No, exactly, right? The mapping yeah. space is changing so fast. Being able to be developing with so many other different companies that are mm -hmm. also working in the mapping space, that, just, that, that allows us to stay always on the edge there. So where is mapping going now? Yeah. Um, big, big open-ended question. I yeah. Know. <laughs> uh, vector data is for real. OK. Uh, concretely, what that opens up is really, really custom styles yeah. um, that are really fast, 
on both the server side and on mobile device. This mm. stuff has to be highly interactive. But like, what if, what if the New York Times or, or the Guardian could have their own map with, mm -hmm. with their own fonts on it? Mm -hmm. Like, that's powerful. That's uh, really I mean, cool. Right. So I mean, pull back. Like, since 2005, we have all been consolidating around basically one map. That's so true. Uh, we we want to undo that in the next two years. So putting that putting that power out there where anybody can kind of have their own map, that's that's going to be pretty sweet. Oh wow! Think about just the implications for that. Just can can you throw out some other examples? I mean, the New York Times. That's a great one. Right. So that's just yeah. design and fonts. Yeah. Um, National Geographic. Mm -hmm. Totally custom place names, right? They've got awesome geographers that have been curating all these names forever. So how do you how do you put make a map like that at scale? Right? Because scale is important here. Yeah. It's got to be as fast as Google mm -hmm. for people anywhere in the world on any device. Right. So that's basically the platform that we're doing. So being able to uh, do design control at that scale, that's that's where things are going to get interesting. And then um, you have some pretty awesome companies with really good points of interest database. If we can start taking other dispersed data sets mm -hmm. because we're using vector data and on the fly create these maps, that can allow anybody to kind of have their own map with their own data, right? Oh, wow. So you take OpenStreetMap, all that value of the data, and another company's data, that, that's, I mean, we, we want people to really own their own maps. Because like, hmm. if location matters so much for these companies, mm -hmm. the context to which you're looking at is really important. So control Absolutely. it. Control the design, control the data in there, and have, have some of the core sets of data be, be open so you can work with it. So. I love that. I love it. Just, just the implications of that are huge. And then what, what would you say are some of the enabling technologies that have helped you get to where you are now? Um, no, no question, uh, Node. OK. Uh, our entire stack's built on Node.js. Really? All, all on the Amazon infrastructure. I mm -hmm. mean, look, if, if we were doing this five years ago without Amazon, yeah, our, our service infrastructure would have cost like Probably oh yeah, like ten million bucks or something. Like, EC2 it's, it's, is amazing for people. Yeah, so and we don't even. I mean, some people are like, "Hey, Amazon's costs are, are high for storage or stuff like that." No, like, don't look at it as storage. Look at it as distribution. Absolutely. We need these maps fast everywhere in the world, and Amazon kind of gives us that leverage. So the combination of Node um, yeah. meets meets Amazon is um, it's it's pretty awesome for us. So what next? Uh, next couple months are gonna be awesome. We're gonna okay. we're gonna we're gonna roll out. Uh, some vector work that's going to be a game changer. Uh, not just in regards to design control, mm -hmm. but really fast updates from OpenStreetMap. Sure. We're going to be able to, you're going to be able to go to OpenStreetMap, make an edit, and have that edit show up on a Mapbox map within an hour. An hour? Yeah. So like that kind of positive feedback loop is going to encourage more and more people to actually go and improve the map. Uh, really love working with the OpenStreetMap community. We're adding a new editing interface. So you, like, you take satellite data, mm -hmm. you put it in, and literally trace these streets. So m making that easier is going to be pretty cool. So that's going to be rolling out. And then um, really low level uh, satellite data. So we partnered mm -hmm. with uh, Digital Globe, the okay. largest satellite company. Yeah, and we're going to be rolling out very low level imagery for both the US and Europe in the next couple months. So that's that and it, it all works together, right? Yeah. I need those roads mm -hmm. to lay on the satellite data. And I need those roads to be updated really fast. So that's. That's what we're looking at for the next couple months. Has anyone ever approached you about historical maps and the changing of maps over time and how to play around with that? No, that, that, that's, a, that's a great question. There's, there's this really cool new satellite company coming online called Skybox. OK. And they've got what's called microsatellites. So it's, it's instead of like a several hundred million dollar satellite, mm -hmm. really small satellites that are going around much faster, taking snapshots. So oh, let's say cool. you want to very quickly be able to have a lot of images of a port or yeah. something, or very quickly show deforestation. Mm -hmm. So we're working with folks like that to do interfaces where you can do sliders, before and after sliders, have different oh, points of interest. Pretty, that's pretty amazing. Um, so the, yeah, that, that kind of time series, uh, you, ha you really have to build the interfaces and they have to be really fast. Okay. Excellent. Well, so many things, that, so many directions I could go with this, but we don't have time. We'd love to get you back on Tag Zulu, especially when you roll out more of this stuff. Awesome. And uh, yeah, if people want to follow you on Twitter, follow Mapbox on Twitter. Is it at Mapbox? Yep, at Mapbox. At Mapbox. So many great things going on with mapping, guys. Isn't that cool? All right. Well, we're going to roll. I'm Amanda, Tag Zulu Live here at South by Southwest. We'll catch you soon.